Making a Stuart model steam plant, this is part 49, looking at different ways to mount the gas burner on the boiler base plate. This may seem to be a very simple subject, why not just fasten the burner onto the baseboard and sit the boiler over the top of it and screw everything together? Well, no, that's not a good idea. Gas burners like these, and especially spirit burners, get very hot indeed, so you need some kind of a barrier between the burner and the baseboard. I once had a Stuart boiler plant with a 504 boiler and a spirit burner, and that just sat inside underneath the boiler and the boiler was screwed to the baseboard. But in no time at all, the baseboard became very badly burnt. Underneath the boiler, the top planks had turned to charcoal. That's why I'm doing it this way. I'm going to mount the burner in a specially made holder, which in turn will be bolted to this 3mm steel plate and the boiler itself will also be bolted to the steel plate and the whole assembly will act as a heat sink. This small machine in my workshop is called a Clark metal worker and it does have its uses but it's only for very thin pieces of metal. Using the bending part of this Clark metal worker I'm showing what it's capable of doing but once again it's only capable of doing this with a very thin piece of brass. I'm going to illustrate one particular method that could work. If I got a longer piece of brass, I could make something like this. If this was a much longer piece of brass, I could make a special mounting which would hold the burner above the 3mm piece of steel that I'm going to use for the base. A while ago, I built a 504 steam plant, and this was by far the best way to do it. But it took a long time and made the unit very heavy indeed. It worked very well, the main metal was stainless steel and the two side plates inside the boiler made it so I didn't need any heat insulation material between the internal heat sink and the outer covers. It really did work very well, but it took ages to make it. Riveting the brass angle in place and then fitting the internal holder for the burner made it a long and in my opinion overcomplicated job. I don't have the facility to be able to bend a piece of sheet metal in one piece of this size. Here's what the unit ended up looking like, and it really did work very well. Thankfully, I have a simpler idea which should also work very well. I could make another identical bracket using some more sheet brass. But for this method, I would have to drill holes in the gas burner, thread them, and bolt the gas burner to the bracket, and I don't want to do that. Unfortunately, the physical limitations and size of the Clark Metalworker machine will not allow me to duplicate the small bracket I made using much thicker brass, like the sheet that it's sat on. The Clark Metalworker will allow me to bend a larger piece of brass, as you can see in this image. Thinking about the best way to do this, I don't think this is it. I drew round the burner. It sounds like a good idea. And looking at my hairy face appearing in the video, means that I need to try out my new beard trimmer. As you can see, the simplest jobs are often the best. I drew round the burner and then I bent it on the lines. But I didn't get it the right size, so I'm trying again with another piece of brass. This time I'm going to bend one side, put the burner in position against the bend, then mark the other side of the burner and very carefully bend it on the other line. What I need to do is mark it out first and then cut the piece of brass to the correct size. Once upon a time I had a key toner 3 foot guillotine and it was really good. I could cut 8 steel plate with my weight by jumping up and down on the lever. Unfortunately though that is long gone, it was too big for my previous workshop. So instead now I use a bandsaw. So after marking out this piece of brass I cut it to shape using my bandsaw. Because of the thickness of the brass and the physical limitations of the Clark metal worker, I had to persuade it to be 90 degrees by using a soft hammer. Don't forget that the gas burner needs to be a tight fit in this holder. With a bit more persuasion from the soft hammer, eventually the sides were definitely at 90 degrees to the base. Once I removed the part from the vise and tried the burner in position, even with a small amount of the holder clamping the burner, I can't shake it off at all, so this is just what I need it to be like. The next part of the job involves making an end stop to prevent this gas burner from being pushed too far into the holder underneath the boiler. 
Even though I've marked the position of the burner as seen here, I'm going to fit the end plate right at the end. I feel the need to be honest and say that I did have two attempts at making this brass burner holder. The first one was okay, but it was too big and didn't grip the burner. But this one is just fine. The next part of the job is to fit the end to it. And this is what I'm going to use for the end, a piece of scrap brass, which I'm going to cut accurately to fit in the end part of this brass holder. I initially left it slightly oversized, then I silver soldered it all together and made everything the right size using my 4 inch belt sander. Something worth mentioning, it has to be silver solder. If you're making a part like this, do not soft solder it, because the temperature of the burner is way above the temperature of soft solder, and it would just melt. This is what the part looked like after I'd cleaned it up. And here's the finished item. It looks okay, and it grips the burner perfectly. All I need to do now is temporarily put the boiler on top of the steel plate and check that the burner is going to be in the right place on my original marks and I think it's near enough. In the next episode I will show how I fit all of the parts together including the boiler. That's it for this episode, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.